No backend, no full product, just a clear SaaS idea. A strong value proposition and something real you can put in front of users today to validate demand. So, you're thinking of building the next million dollar SaaS? And now, here's the truth. Five years ago, that meant hiring developers, designers, and expensive consultants just to get the first version out of the door. And today, a solo founder with AI can do most of the heavy lifting, which lowers the barrier to entry massively. But here's a mistake most people make. They jump straight into building a SaaS product, like the features, dashboards, workflows, etc. Before they even know if anyone wants it. So most ideas do not fail because of bad code. They fail because no one validated the problem clearly enough. So in this video, we are not building a full SaaS product. We are doing something much smaller. We are five coding a SaaS landing page, one that explains the problem, the promise, and the outcome. So you can test your idea, collect feedback, and see real signals before writing real product code. And this is about validation, not overbuilding. And once you understand this workflow, you can use it to pressure test any SaaS ideas in days instead of months. First, I will show you how to use Noble LLM to do structured SaaS product research fast, clean, and without getting lost in random tabs. And if you have ever tried researching a SaaS idea by opening like 10 articles, copying notes into a document, and then forgetting where everything came from, this actually solves that problem. Think of Noble LM like a research command center. Instead of juggling browser tabs, you drop everything into one place. And the system helps you organize and build on this step by step. And by the end of this part, you will have a solid research base you can reuse, expand, and even send to other AI tools to refine your idea further. So first, we can just open Noble LM and create a new notebook. On the left sidebar, we can click on Discover Sources. This is where Noble LM starts gathering information for you in one place. And just like what we always do, we have prepared a free guide that includes all the information and prompts for this workflow. You can find the link in the description. It's inside our free community. Now, we can copy the first prompt from the guide and paste it into the Discover Search prompt inside Noble LM. And then we can substitute these placeholders here and we can hit Search and wait for it to finish. Once the results are ready, you can import all sources into your notebook. With your sources in place, we can go back to the guide and copy the main Noble LM prompt. Once it's pasted in the chat box, we can hit enter and then we can let it run. And when it's done, we can pin the output so you do not lose it. Now you can use this output as your research foundation. For the next step, we are going to open our guide again and copy the third Noble LM prompt. And now this one is for synthesizing the research. And again, once it's pasted, we can hit enter. And that's it. In just a few steps, you have turned scattered research into a clean, reusable SaaS research base. This actually saves a lot of time, like keeps things organized and makes it much easier to move from idea to execution. So we have also created a checklist in the guide, which you can use to track your understanding of your phase one progress. And this can help you think and identify if the idea you are working with is viable or not. So you already know how to go from scratch to a solid base, right? Now, let's say you already have a SaaS idea and you are ready to take the next step. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So instead of guessing what your product should look like, we will use AI to help us brainstorm and come up with an outline of our landing page. This is very important because this saves us time in development and it also saves you from getting frustrated from the AI code assistant hallucinating later. And for this part, you can use any generative AI you prefer like Gemini or ChatGPT, etc. But that said, the first thing we do is to open Gemini, of course. Let's then open the guide and copy this prompt here. So this prompt actually gives the AI clear uh, context of what we are working on. And once it's copied, we can paste it directly into Google Air Studio. And we can start working from a structured base. But remember this, this part 
of the process is not just one off prompt and then you're all good to go. No, this part is where you actually brainstorm with the AI and come up with your own ideas on how you may want your landing page to look like and behave, etc. So the purpose of this prompt is to give you a strong starting point so you are not starting from nothing. To make this part easier, like if you are just looking to follow along with what I'm doing for now, you can find the outline I used in the guide. But again, if you are serious about creating something unique and really yours, you really should not rush this step. So from here, you can examine the outline that the AI produces and see which parts you want to add or if the outline missed uh, features that you want to be added in your language page. And that's pretty much it. Once you have finished this, you are now clear to proceed with designing your landing page's UI. So we have finished two big things already. And first, we completed our SaaS product research and ideation. Second, we created a clear outline for our landing page. And now it's time to move into development. So in this part, I will show you how to make that outline and turn it into an actual UI design using Google Stitch. So you can think of this set like turning a wireframe into a facial draft. You already know what the page should say, right? And now we're giving it shape, structure, and layout without starting from a blank canvas. So first, we can open Google Stitch, of course. And once you're inside, make sure to select the aspect ratio you are mainly designing for. So in this case, we are mainly designing for desktop. And so let's select web. And this makes sure Stitch designs with the right screen size and layout in mind. And for step two, we can open the guide and copy the landing page prompt we designed specifically for Google Stitch. And then we can paste it into the prompt box. And from here, substitute the placeholders with your own details. And after that, we can paste the landing page outline you created earlier into the indicated section. This actually gives Stitch the most information about the structure and the context it needed to generate the UI design you want. Once everything is filled in, we can hit enter and wait for the design to be created. Now you may not get the exact UI you want on the first try, and that's completely okay. Because design is an iterative process, right? And while AI helps, creativity is still mainly brought by humans, just like me and you. So if you check the guide, you'll find tips you can use to refine your prompt and improve the results when working with Google Stitch. So in the results section of the guide, you can also check out the UI kit we designed and used. If you're just replicating what we do here for now, you can download and use it as well. So if you do it just like that, you follow the guide and tips, and then by now, you have now probably taken your landing page from an outline to a real UI design and turned your ideas into something you can see, tweak, and build on. So now that we have finished creating our UI kit, we can now start developing our landing page. Okay, so now we are turning our UI design into a real landing page using Google Anti-Gravity. And up to this point, we have already got two things, a clear SaaS idea and a finished UI kit from Google Stitch. And now the goal here is to connect those pieces and turn them into something usable. This step is like assembling furniture from pre-cut parts. The design work is already done and now we are putting everything together so it actually functions as a landing page without manually wiring every detail. So first, we can open Google Anti-Gravity. This is the IDE we'll use for this part of the workflow. And this is where the design and structure finally come together. And next, we can open the folder that contains the Google Stitch you designed and exported earlier. This gives Anti-Gravity the facial building blocks it needs. And again, you can check the resources section of the guide for the same UI kit I'm using. Now, open a guide and copy the landing page prompt from the anti-gravity section. We can paste it into the code assistant chat box and then take your landing page outline and paste it into the placeholder shown here. And the goal of this prompt is to synthesize the Google Stitch UI you designed earlier and transform it into a full landing page using your outline. And if you want to replicate this landing page closely, 
you can also reference the spec sheet attached in the guide as well. And now we can hit enter. So any gravity will write every single line of code for us. And all we have to do now is to approve requested actions and before the agent executes them. And also aside from approving actions, the only thing that you should be looking out for when five coding and in whatever projects you're working on is debugging or fixing bugs. And for that, you can check out this free beginner five coding tips and best practices paper we created. It's also in our free community. And again, the link is in the description. And after some time, when it's done writing in the code, you'll be prompt to launch the project locally in your browser. And that's pretty much it. And you now have a landing page and the structure is in place. The design is wired up and everything's ready to build on. We have this clean hero section that informs visitors of what this page is all about. Not too fancy, not too bland. And if we scroll down to the next section, you can see that we have a slider here. This adds interactivity to our landing page. So visitors can use this to preview how our UI design software can turn simple wireframes into high fidelity UI. We also have our social proofs and gallery section. Although this gallery does not contain anything yet as of now. But I think that's still something that we can add here, right? So let's go back to any gravity. And then we can ask the agent to modify the navigation bar. So let's say we want the navigation bar to be visible wherever we are in the page. So let's set its position to fixed and let's give it round corners to make it fit the concept better. So again, let's just hit enter. And as you can see, the agent creates an implementation plan for it. But before we give the goal signal, let's also ask the agent to change the opacity of the navigation bar to give it this semi-transparent glass look that will fit very nicely with our landing page. And then the implementation plan is updated. So let's give it the green light and wait for it to finish running all the code. So now that it's done updating the files, let's run the local host again to check it out. And as you can see, our navigation bar now looks really nice and it blends well with the overall looks of the landing page. And here you can see that we have also changed the images and to do that, it's very easy. You just upload the image you want to use. We can ask anti-gravity to substitute the placeholders. And that's it. So with our landing page created, now we have to set up its main feature, which is capturing emails whenever someone signs up for the waitlist. And for this, we'll use Superbase to store collected emails. And it's very simple. So first in anti-gravity, we can ask the agent to help us configure our email capture backend using Subbase, and let's also ask for a custom SQL that we'll use to create the live table, which will store the emails we collected. So let's hit enter and wait for the agent to come up with an implementation plan. And now it's done. And as you see here in the implementation plan, we have to get our Superbase project URL and anonymous key. And this is very important. So our front end can actually communicate with the back end. So we can open Superbase and scrolling down here and you can see the project URL. We can just click copy and paste it in a notepad. And to find the anonymous key, we can just click search and select APIs. And here you can see the anonymous key option. We can click it to copy the key into your clipboard. So with those copied, let's go back to anti-gravity and enter the project URL and anonymous key here. And when you are done with that, finally give the agent the go signal to start writing the backend code. And after a short while it's done, the next thing we have to do is to set up the table in Superbase where we will store the collected emails, right? And with this, as you can see here, we will use this custom SQL that we asked the agent to create. So let's copy it and go to Superbase. And we can click on SQL Editor and then paste it here. And finally, let's run the SQL. And as you can see, it's done. And if we check here, you can see that the table that will contain our collected emails is fully set up. And with that done, it's time to test it out and check whether it's working or not. 
So we can launch the project locally by clicking this localhost link. And now we are in our landing page. So let's try signing up in the waitlist. Uh, let's enter the email address here and then let's click join. So it gives us the success message. And so if we check in Superbase, you can see that the table was updated live and the email we entered is now stored in a neat table. If we ever need to migrate this email list, we can just export it as a CSV file. And that's it. We have a fully built and functioning landing page. So now you have finished part one of your SaaS workflow. And at this point, you now know how to have a validated SaaS idea and how to build a real landing page. And I know it may feel a little bit unusual to start with a landing page instead of an MVP, but it's a really important step to test the demand first. So if you want us to continue this series, please hit the like button and let us know your thoughts in the comment sections so that we may continue building the MVP or even the complete product in the future series. So to wrap this up, here's the real takeaway. It has not just changed how SaaS product gets built. It has changed how SaaS ideas should be tested. Founders and small teams now have more leverage than ever, not because they can build faster, but because they can validate faster. The biggest opportunities right now are not generic tools. They are vertical AI native products that solve very specific problems for very specific users. And what you just saw was not a full SaaS build. It was something more important. You saw how quickly you can go from a rough idea to a clear landing page that explains the problem, the promise, and the outcome. Something real you can show to users, collect feedback on, and use to decide whether this idea is worth building at all. And this is one of those rare moments where small teams actually have the advantage. So you do not need to overbuild, you do not need to guess at all. You can test first and then build with confidence. So in the next part of this series, we will go deeper into what to look for once your landing page is live, signals, feedback, and how to decide whether to double down or move on. And if you want to move faster and build alongside with other serious founders and builders, you're welcome to join our Any No Code in a Website Design community. We share in-depth tutorials, real build breakdowns, and provide one-on-one -on -one tech support to help you implement ideas faster. So if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more videos like this and the next part of this series and more practical AI builds tutorials. Thank you, and I'll see you in our next one.